The second talk, the title is Increased um, uh, MMP9's Activity Correlated with Flow-Mediated Intraluminal Thrombus Deposition and World Generation in Human Abdominal Aortic Aneurysm. Um, the presenter is Dr. Dukas, which is currently uh, practicing vascular surgery at uh, Ontario. She completed her general surgery and master of surgery at the University of uh, Manitoba. This is uh, where she became interested in vascular surgery and started her research of um, aortic aneurysm. Um, she then uh, went to complete the, her fellowship in uh, of vascular surgery at the University of Western Ontario. So Dr. Dukas, please. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my pleasure to present my research I did trying to further our understanding at why aneurysms grow in rupture. Currently, vascular surgeons repair aneurysms based on size, 5.5 centimeters for men and five centimeters for women. This isn't perfect because we see aneurysms rupturing below the threshold and those that grow well beyond it. What we do know is it starts with the degradation of collagen elastin, the load bearing substances in the median adventitia. This is through an inflammatory process. There are four proposed mechanisms for this currently. Proteolytic degradation through matrix metalloproteinases, specifically MMP9. Now these are zinc endopeptidases that are remodeling enzymes that become dysregulated in disease states. There's inflammatory response as well as biomechanical wall shear stress as we recently learned and molecular genetics of the patients. Based on a study done at our center, looking at patients who had CT scans done at rupture uh, and fluid models generated, we found that the rupture occurred in areas of low wall shear stress, low velocity recirculation zones. This was contrary to the me fluid mechanic model at the time, which thought that rupture occurred at the impingement high stress zones of the aorta. We wanted to look at thrombus, proteolytic factors, inflammation, as well as wall shear stress to better understand what was going on in these aortas. We enrolled patients who were undergoing abdominal aortic aneurysm repair that was open. Risk factors and data was collected at the time that consent was obtained. They had CT scans and computational fluid models, as well as modeling of their thrombus were generated. At the time of surgery, full thickness aortic tissue samples were harvested. These samples were analyzed. The samples were looking at collagen and elastin, inflammation, as well as MMP9, total and active. All the data was analyzed together and compared. When we looked at the computational fluid studies, we found that there were three types of aneurysms, those with eccentric thrombus, which was the majority of them and is shown on the screen, uh, where thrombus predominated in one portion of the aorta, those with circumferential thrombus, where there was one flow channel, and those devoid of thrombus at all. Now, when we looked at the flow through these aortas, we found that there was increased thrombus deposition in areas of low wall shear stress and low velocity. This was statistically significant. We then looked at thrombus MMP9, inflammation, as well as collagen and elastin in the tissue. What we found is that as compared to controls, there was increased collagen and there was decreased collagen and elastin in areas of high thrombus and increased inflammation. When we looked at MMP9 total and active, we found that in areas of high MMP9, there was less collagen and less elastin. This was statistically significant in both cases. When we were looking at patients who had eccentric thrombus and comparing it to total concentration of MMP9 within the tissue at those locations, we found that areas of high intraluminal thrombus correlated with high levels of MMP9. When we look specifically at all the patients that had eccentric thrombus, there was quite a bit more MMP9 in the locations of high thrombus. This was statistically significant. This was the first study to incorporate thrombus, inflammation, proteolytic enzymes, as well as wall stress and velocity within aortic aneurysms. Our population of aortic aneurysms was the same as most populations of aortic aneurysms. What we found was that there was marked variability of MMP9 in aortic aneurysms, that in areas of high thrombus, there was higher MMP9, lower collagen and elastin, and increased inflammation. 
In areas of recirculation, there was higher amounts of uh, intraluminal thrombus, as well as the recirculation and high thrombus was associated with higher concentrations in the tissue of MMP9. This was the first study to correlate in human aortic tissue flow and stress within the aorta with intraluminal thrombus, as well as tissue MMP9 levels. The ultimate goal of this work is to develop a more precise model for the risk of rupture to possibly explain why there's continued expansion in EVAR and uh, as well elucidate a target that we could use in high risk aneurysms. I want to thank you very much for allowing me to present my work and also Dr. April Boyd and David Kuhn. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lucas. I also enjoy your presentation. Um, it's very interesting how um, this uh, data um, is showing that low shear stress and, and, and the role of show and low shear stress are uh, related to rupture. Uh, there are a couple of questions and I will try to see if we can um, answer those. Um, can you postulate a mechanism why MMP9s uh, um, are present at the high levels in areas of uh, increased uh, ILT? Yeah. Uh... I think it has to do with the inflammatory process. So in areas of intra increased intraluminal thrombus, there is more hypoxia there, which can lead to inflammation, activation of cytokines, as well as I think dysregulation of the MMPs in their state, less tissue inhibitors of the MMPs. So you have oxidative stress, which increases inflammation and then develops, I, I think increases the amount of MMP9s within the tissue and MMPs in total. So somehow you are uh, trying to say that the thrombus also induce this type of mechanism. Yeah, we know that thrombus induces local oxidative stress in the wall of the aorta as the aorta gets the majority of its oxygen from the lumen. So I think because there's increased inflammation in those areas, you're going to see dysregulation of normally present endopeptidases, so things that remodel the aorta, becoming dysregulated and producing too much and not being downregulated. Yeah, that is a very interesting concept. I was working in the bus with uh, one of our residents in rats, and uh, it was interesting to see the, the thrombus and the relationship with the wall. We were interested in inflammation and interleukin-6, so just in case I threw that interleukin-6 to you guys because it's, it was very interesting. Um, uh, another question is, uh, what do you think is the next step on this uh, line of research? I think the next step is to look at more mediators. More, there is many more MMP9s, there's cytokines are all in, that are all involved in the development of aneurysms and what kind of causes them in some aortas to grow quicker. So looking at more of the mediators that cause that possibly looking at the patient's own genetics, as well as looking at the 4D MRI. So basically real-time modeling of the aorta to get a more accurate representation of the flow and the stress that is felt within the aorta at different locations. Uh, I have a quick, quick question. Uh, why MMP9s and no others? So I think this was the first research. MMP9 has been well studied both in thoracic aneurysms as well as abdominal aneurysms as one of the MMPs that is most present in aneurysm tissue. It's also most present within the patient's serum. Uh, so based on that, we wanted to start small and look specifically at MMP9 and then I think branch out and go from there and see how it interacts with all the other MMPs. That's, that's a great answer, and I appreciate that because it's interesting what happened with the rest, but it's good what you said, go first to that point because it's very one well study unknown. Congratulations, I like that. Thank um, you. Do we have time for more, one more question or we need, can we? Okay, so uh, I will try to read from the chat. When was CFD analysis and ILT reconstruction done compared to open repair and tissue harvest? So all of the, uh, uh, the CFT analysis was done prior to the repair, and that was done within a month of the surgery, which is how most uh, aneurysms are repaired within Canada. So as soon as you have a diagnosis of an aneurysm that needs to be repaired, it usually is repaired within a month if you're going, undergoing open repair. 
Hmm. Based on your results, uh, one of the questions asked, uh, can, can we use MMP9s as a predictive marker for rupture? They have looked at serum MMP9 to see if there is a, a prediction with rupture. Currently, I mean, you're not going to be harvesting people's tissue before right. <laughs> their rupture. So currently there isn't an accurate way of predicting rupture, at least with MMP9 right now, yes. with what we know currently. So I think it's just gathering more information to see if we can eventually identify a target. That is, that is a great answer also, uh, Annie, because uh, yeah, circulate. Circula in circulation, MMP9s are even um, difficult. Um, uh, you do cymography for, uh, to determine the MMP9s in tissue? Uh, so we used a bioplex immunoassay to like, oh. we, we freeze the tissue in liquid nitrogen and then send it yeah. to a lab where it generates the concentration within the tissue. Yeah. I see. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dukas. I, I appreciate your presentation very much. I enjoyed it.